Welcome to Electra Online. Here this example is shown to show that heat doesn't necessarily have to flow from the plate to the fluid. It can be the other way around. Let's assume that the fluid has a temperature of 300 degrees centigrade and the plate is at a temperature of 40 degrees centigrade, which means that heat will actually be transmitted from the fluid to the plate through convection. Now, let's say that we have, we're given a transmission coefficient of 250 watts per square meter per Kelvin. That's typically because there would be a fairly strong flow of fluid across the plate. We're given the dimensions of the plate, so let's go ahead and plug in our equation. So Q dot, the amount of heat flow, is going to be equal to the change in the temperature divided by 1 over H times the area. This should be an H, not a K. There we go. So the transition coefficient and the surface area. So let's plug in what we have here. So this is equal to the difference between the two is 260 degrees, but let's make it a minus 260 uh, degrees centigrade or centigrade degrees, centigrade degrees, because it's heat flowing from the air to the plate. And so that would kind of show the reverse of the direction. We divide that by one over, H would be 250 watts per square meter times Kelvin, and then we multiply that times an area of 0 0.5 meters, and multiply it times 0 0.25 meters. So notice the meter squared will cancel out, the Kelvin will cancel out, and we're left with watts once it goes to the numerator. Now Q dot, using a calculator, will be equal to, let's take uh, 250, times 0.5 times 0.25 and then take the inverse of that uh, let's see here uh, no not the inverse uh, let me try it again 31.25 31.25 31.25 and multiply that times 260 and we give minus 8125 minus 8125 that would be watts just watts that means joules per second that would be the heat flow to the plate from the fluid, from the air that flows over it, and that is how it's done.